Hello everyone, DA here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Corpus and the Grenier Faction Infantry. Now, this is something that's been uh, one of the discussions within the community, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a video on it, let you guys see what I think, and also to know what you guys think as well. Now, we will be examining the strengths, the weaknesses, and also the size of each army, and also who would win if they go into an all-out battle, if it comes to it. Now, to really get a closer stat of these factions, we will go based on what has been released in the game so far, and I will also group them based on ground units, tactics, leadership, flyers, which are the small ones, not the giant ones, and also their recovery options if they happen to go down. Now, we will also ignore the ranks such as Warden or Scout because those are still part of the general units, and that will be ignored just for now. Now, starting off with the Corpus, these guys have been known to have some of the most problematic things and have been quite problematic for a lot of players in the game, not only because of their weapons damage, but also because of their specialty units. The Corpus have eight crewman classes, they have five MOA types, three Bursa types, and also they have multiple drones, all which can be categorized as infantry. Now, the Grenier on the other side have seven special units. They have six light units, eight medium, and also they have nine heavy units. Now, this will be added to, of course, we will be seeing the ghouls later on in the future. Now, all of these are also capable of doing some damage. Each faction have their own damage dealers, and also some of them can be categorized as utility. Now, on the account of single soldier battles, the corpus units have mostly specialized in beam weapons and also targeting eye armored units which happens to be Grenier, so they are very good in specializing their weaponry when it comes to going against Grenier factions. They can also nullify abilities, they can also overwhelm enemies with drones, and also use machines, and they are also specialized in tactical warfare, so they are able to think things out, map things out on the battlefield, survey the layout of the land through the orbit, and also do a lot of those before deploying troops. So that is some of the things that you can see about the Corpus and how they are so far. One of the things that can also be said about the Corpus is the fact that they also deploy additional and tougher troops only when needed. And they also have one of the most special teams to use to their advantage. They have the Scrambus and also the Nullifiers, which are very tough to deal with. Now, if things get bad, the Corpus can also bring in the Bursas and also bring in the Ambulance units, and those can deal a lot of damage as well. And with the Razorback Amada, they can also gain a lot of advantage. Now, for the Grenier, it is also a matter of pure raw strength and will. With most people, a lot of people may cast the Grenier aside as mindless beings or weak, but they actually have one of the most powerful ground forces in the Origin system. They are the most practical when it comes to weapons equipped, they have their weapons equipped with both impact and slash. And while most of Corpus abandoned posts and abandoned ships after it's fallen to overwhelming infested horde, the Grenier in most cases will fight back and also later on weaponize this, weaponize the infested, weaponize different things to combat the infested as well. Now this gives them an advantage to expand through the regions that the Corpus will leave alone and abandon, and that is also one of the things that adds to their numbers and also help them grow. Now with the Plains of Eidolon and the cinematic quest that we've had so far, the Grenier Corps have also been the most tactical of all special units. Their specialty is a mix of heavy weapons and also guerrilla warfare. The Grenier is also known for their body augmentations, which sometimes can prove to be an advantage whenever they are in battle, something that we can see in some of the bigger bosses you can see in Vehek as well. So when facing two of these factions against each other, in a category of being resourceful, the Corpus will always be resourceful in numbers and also in weapons. They are basically a machine factory, and while the Grenier have to wait for the cloning process to complete, or wait for the goals to be completed, the amount of troops that can be corrected in an hour is also something that will give them an edge in battle because the Corpus will be able to manufacture machines a lot much faster. And when the cloning process and manufacturing is all complete, in the state of tactics, the Grenier will win mainly because they are specialized. As I said earlier, they are specialized in taking down organized and large enemies. And like I mentioned again, they are also specialized in guerrilla warfare which will be something very useful against the Corpus. 
And the Grenier Special Units also have jetpacks, which can also be very useful and more of an advantage in combat. Now, in the role of leadership, the Corpus will mainly win this mainly because the Corpus high ranks tend to stay away from battle, while the Grenier leadership tend to lead the charge. Now, leading the charge can boost morale for a lot of your army and also a lot of your soldiers, but if they get killed, that will leave everybody in a state where they will have to scramble and try to survive. So, Corpus will win for this as far as their leadership always staying behind. Now, a lot of people will say that is a coward move, but that is actually them playing it smart and that is how they're able to live longer and also survive a lot much longer. The next one will be on small ships and flyers, and I have to say the Grenier is going to win this one. Now, while both factions have their own ships that they're using to bring in reinforcement, the Grenier also have the single unit flyers and a lot of this can be used in a lot of special and tactical missions as well. Plus, the Grenier can also drop out of orbit without using any ship and we've been able to see that on the Plains of Eidolon. Now, while both of these factions have their infantry winning in one way or the other and how they're able to match each other, I will say that I will give everything in its entirety to the Grenier. And this is mainly because the Grenier units know how to survive and they are specialized in a lot of these things more than the Corpus are. And if you look at the way the Grenier treats its factions, the way they treat their soldiers, it is a lot much tougher. Anyone who fails, the result is death. We can see that with the Rathum as well. So those are some of the things that makes them a lot much tougher, a lot much harder. That's why they all have a lot of augmentations because they've lost a limb here and there. Having goals can also be resourceful. That means nothing goes to waste within the Grenier faction. But these goals can also inflict an entire wave with toxin damage. And that is something that will basically cripple the Corpus and something that we can see as much of a powerful tool. Now, if you think the Corpus would win in an infantry battle, leave your comment down below and I would love to read them and also see your explanation as well. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more Warframe. And as always, it is DS signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one. We found some way.